Number 106, identify all chemical species present in an aqueous solution of Ca3PO42 and list these species in decreasing order of their concentrations. And then hint, remember that the phosphate ion, PO4 through minus, is a weak base. Okay, so it seems like we have calcium phosphate, Ca3PO42, and it seems like it's going to be disassociating or breaking down into its ions. So let's just write that out. So we have Ca3PO4, and that's a two. Now, we are starting off with a solid, right? This has a KSP value, and it's going to come to equilibrium with its two ions, the calcium and the phosphate. So I have Ca and then plus PO4. Uh, PO4, yep, there you go. Calcium, always in group two, so that's a plus two. Phosphate ion is always a negative three. You could also find those out by just taking your subscripts and crisscrossing them back up. Now let's just balance. There's three calciums, so I do have to put a three here. There's two phosphates, so I'm going to put a two here. And since they're charged, plus and minus, this has to be aqueous. This has to be aqueous, and this would be a solid. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Now, we want to list these species in decreasing order of concentration. So basically, we want the most concentrated all the way down to the least concentrated. So we'll say highest concentration, and then all the way down to the lowest concentration. Okay, so... Let's go for it. Well, the first one is a little trick because they did say that we're an aqueous solution. An aqueous solution means that we are surrounded by water, H2O. So that means that you will have way more water than you will have of your solute, which is Ca3PO42. Remember, the water is the solvent, and you always place your solute, the little thing, into the bigger solvent to make a solution. So even though water is not in here, that's going to be in the highest concentration. So we have H2O all the way on this side. Now we can go with this. Now technically, there are three calciums for every two phosphates and one of these. So, according to the ratios, you would have the most of the calcium ion because you have the highest number here. So, if it's a 3 to 2 to 1 ratio, that means that you would have the most for calcium, then comes the phosphate, then comes this guy. So, we have the highest for H2O, then comes the Ca2+, because it's in the highest ratio, 3, then comes the phosphate ion, which is PO4, 3 minus. Okay, now we have to do something about this PO4, 3 minus is a weak base. Well, remember, acid-base reactions, PO4, 3 minus, if it's a weak base, it's going to react with more water, which we already said it was at the highest concentration, and this will come to equilibrium to produce your conjugate acid and your conjugate base, right? PO4, 3 minus, this is the base. So you're going to gain a hydrogen, becoming HPO4, 2 minus. And then plus, you have H2O, which becomes OH minus. So now where does this rank? Well, remember, when you're doing acid-base reactions, especially if you have a weak base, you predominantly, predominantly will have as much as the weak base that you started with. The disassociation into your ions are very slim. So at equilibrium, out of these three, because we already discussed water, 
you would have way more of this, your starting material, than your products. So these two have to come at a lower concentration than the PO4 through minus. But now if we look at the ratio here, there's no number in front. That means that it's a one to one. And if they're the same value, that means that they're going to be equal in concentration. But we know that they have to be less than the PO4 3 minus. So we're going to say, okay, this is going to be less, right? HPO4 2 minus. And it's going to be equal to the concentration of OH minus. Okay, are we there yet? One more, because I now have HPO4 2 minus, which can also be, uh, you know, acting as a base. HPO4 2 minus will also react with water to get out the next, you know, acid up. HPO4 2 minus plus H2O will come to equilibrium to gain one more hydrogen, H2PO4 minus, and then more OH. But now since you're breaking it down, this, the difference between these two OHs is nothing, basically, that you're still going to be equal to the HPO4 value. But here's your last concentration value, H2PO4. And this comes in dead last, H2PO4 minus. And those are all of your aqueous materials, right? I didn't include the solid because that's not aqueous, that's a solid. And I included water because literally that's the solvent. So we just added it up there. But these are all of the ions that are in this equation or this question from highest concentration to lowest. And that's it. I really hope this helped. We are done with chapter 15. Oh my goodness, this was a journey. <laughs> Thank you so much for, you know, being part of the part of the journey with me and being part of the ride. I really hope that I'm helping you out. We also have physics videos and math videos on the channel. If you guys need help in those subjects, maybe we can help you out. All right. Tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. Thank you so much. This channel would not be here without you guys. So you're the driving force. Thank you for that. And I will be talking to you later. Okay. Bye-bye.